let's talk about empathy today, right? And wait, text in a title that's too mainstream. Who knows this movie, especially this scene, right? Empathy maker and engineer. So if you're going to learn one thing this year to become a better developer, it's not going to be coding, it's not going to be Python, it's, it's going to be something else. It's going to be empathy. So organizers, lock the door. I'm going to make sure everyone is going to learn what is empathy and why we need empathy in software. All right, so before that, I'm uh, Narain. Yeah, I don't have a last name. Most of the Indians don't have last name. <laughs> So, um, I go by the handle due to code, you can just tweet at me or follow me. And I'm a software consultant, I work remotely, uh, mostly from home, sometimes from coffee shops. So let's dive right in. What is empathy? Right. So, is it feeling sorry for others? Right. Is that? No, right? So feeling sorry for others is not empathy. We know that it's not empathy, it's just sympathy. So is it standing in someone else's shoes? Yeah, maybe closer, but that's not close enough. Then what is empathy already? So let me walk you through something. If someone approaches you and they say that they feel so uncomfortable and they feel unsafe or they are worried, you should not judge them right away. You should not form first you need to start listening to them. And they don't even know they don't even need your solutions. They are just trying to make a connection to you. And they'll be like, I'm stuck. It's so dark in here and I'm overwhelmed that they try to make a connection with you by telling you their sufferings. And when they try to explain their suffering, you know, instead of just judging them or forming an opinion or even just thinking about a solution for their problems, you just first listen to them. And listening to them and making a connection with them is not that easy. You need to pull up an experience, a similar experience from past, in your past life, and you need to feel them how they feel. So once you do that, you will kind of make a connection with them. And that's what they need. So they, do, they don't need a solution. So whenever someone approaches with you, uh, approaches to you with their problems or suffering or whatever, they don't need any solutions. They don't need opinions or judgment. All they need is someone to listen. And now, what is empathy again? It is feeling what they feel as well as making a connection with them. Right? So. Empathy is kind of, you know, a human element. It's related to humans and psychology. And why, why you need empathy in software? Software runs on missions. My uh, Mac runs a software. I, I can tell my machine to, you know, execute the code. But if you notice, software is built by humans. And it is built with humans around. It's, it is built with a team of humans. And it is built for humans, which means Humans are involved in every part of the software cycle. So right from the beginning to your end users, humans are there everywhere. So what if your software lacks this major human element, empathy? How will you be able to even start building a software or how, or how you will be able to build a software to a user? Or how will you even get a user? So that's why you need empathy in software. So let's see like what happens what are the benefits you get if you start practicing empathy? So, if you start practicing empathy, you treat others the way you want to be treated. Like, no one here wants to be treated bad, right? So, like, uh, literally no one, right? So, everyone wants to be treated themselves. So, which means you will be, you'll start treating the people, the others, the same way you want to be treated. 
And once you start treating others well, you will clearly understand the impact of your words on them and your actions. So it's like you can easily replay what you're going to have, talk or what's the impact on others, on yourself, and you'll be like, is that going to make me feel sad? Yes? Then probably you should not tell, tell that to someone. So it's, it's like your brain is so faster than you think. So you can easily replay the words and there won't be any latency issues, right? So, so imagine this. Imagine you're all uh, in a Caribbean beach, sipping a, your favorite vodka or your favorite mocktail if you're non-alcoholic and having a good holiday. It just took a second to get to Caribbean beach and enjoying the holiday, right? So your mind is way faster, which means, okay, now let, let's come back to Philippines. <laughs> And so which means you can easily think before you talk. You can replay your words to yourself and see whether it's going to hurt someone or it's going to make them feel bad. And once you understand the impact on others, you will understand the unspoken part of the communication. So like the communication gap is the major problem everywhere, right from your um, stand-ups to right from your weekly sprints even to the family or relationship or everything. So imagine empathy allowing you to fill in the communication gap and you can be a good developer, you can be a good friend or even a good boyfriend or girlfriend. Also like once you fill in all the communication gap, you'll be able to accurately predict your actions, I mean the other's actions and reactions. So it's like empathy gives you a glimpse of future, right? So imagine you're able to predict what your boss is going to react by your action. And you'll be like, you can just ex escape from the consequences. Imagine you're going to predict your spouse's reaction to your action. I mean, that's a great way to, you know, that's a great benefit to have. Like, you can easily escape from the consequences. Yeah, you're being selfish there, but still, you can use empathy. So once you have a better communication, you can easily convince people. So you can easily convince your point. And so everyone needs this skill of convincing. It, it works everywhere. So you, if you notice, you convince, you, you, will, you will be using these skills everywhere, right from your day job or to your family or everywhere. So if, you, if you're able to empathize people, you'll be easily able to convince them. You can, you can convince your peers to use this tech stack instead of the other one and you'll be able to convince even your friends to go for a Filipino cuisine instead of doing pizza. And finally, once you're able to do all this, convince people, you'll be setting expectations. So not more, not less. You have the exact, you'll set exact expectations and you'll be able to deliver them. So whatever you're delivering is, it's up to you. You deliver a good software or a kindness or friendship or whatever. So that, that's a lot of benefits, right? Like you have so many, so much benefits just as, um, just for being a better developer as well as a better human if you practice empathy. But how to, how to practice empathy? Um, some people are naturally empathetic, right? So it's, it's in their character, it's, it runs through their family or it's in their gene, but, but uh, all those people, they don't end up as a software engineer, unfortunately. Like people like me, uh, take me like, uh, I remember in my past, I was being like a selfish jerk. <laughs> so, but you can actually alter your genes. Uh, I don't know, someone uh, spoke about uh, uh, genetics and uh, genes. So in, uh, studies in epigenetics shows that you can actually have an impact on your genes if you put yourself through deliberate behaviors and situations. So which means even though if you are a selfish jerk, you can still practice empathy and be empathetic. So let's see a few steps to practice empathy. The first thing is you need to listen. So whenever someone comes to you and they talk about their problems or their sufferings, the first thing is like, as I already said, don't judge or don't form opinions or don't even think about solutions. First. You need to listen to them. So once you listen to them, you just make that connection with them. 
Next thing is, you need to find the deepest why. So, why is the person feeling the way they feel? So this uh, deepest why is something uh, called a 5Y method. It's followed in Toyota Industries for finding the root cause of the problems. So let's let's take an example, right? So, so my client asked me to build a microservice using Java. It's like Java. <laughs> no, it's Java is fine, like but <laughs> still Java, <laughs> right? But, there's a disclaimer, right? This example is purely for illustration purpose. I do not intend to hurt sentiments of any individual, community, sect, or religion. But it's still Java, right? <laughs> so, what I can do, like, yeah, they, uh, they come to me and they ask me, like, build something, build a modern microservice, modern microservice using Java. I'll be like, I can act as a cool guy. He'll be like, hey, what? Java, really? Or you go with uh, you know, easier programming languages like uh, Python, or if you want more speed, you can go with Go, Golang. Either I act as a cool guy over there, or I can try to empathize my client. So I, I repeatedly ask the questions about this. So what about Java is important, important to my client? Then I get an answer that, my client has only few. Uh, my client has few developers who knows only Java. They don't know any other languages. Right? I'm like, what? I don't know why you even have those developers. I mean, no offense, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, then I, I again um, repeat the question. So, what about that few developers is so important to my client? Then I find out that, okay, they are the domain experts. They are not just developers. Or normal software engineers, they are the domain experts there. They have expertise in some other domain other than software. Okay. I can understand domain experts. Yeah, you need you need them. So what about domain expertise is important to my client? Then I notice that they need their skills to solve problems in some domain, take industry automation. Fine. It makes sense, kind of. But what about industry automation is important to my client? Then I get to the final answer. That's what they do. They solve, they use software to solve problems in industry. And that's their mission and vision. So the simple sentence which my client asked, or the simple question, can you build a microservice using Java? There is, look at the, uh, you know, if you keep asking why, you will get to the root cause of the problem. It directly aligns with their mission and vision of the company. So, you know, that's how you should keep asking the questions until you get satisfied and until, until you get, you know, feel what others feel and why they want that. The third thing is you have to be vulnerable. You can't, you can't just be like a cool guy or cool girl and be like, hey, why are you sad? Have you ever seen me sad? Right? Cool guy. I don't know, no, don't be sad. Come on, chill out. Can't, can't be that. So if you want to empathize people, you need to be vulnerable. You, you need to have a, a soft uh, front and a strong back, a soft front to let people in, and a strong back to pull out your past experiences and feel what they feel. So don't be a cool guy or cool girl, right? I mean, you can be, but not all the time. So the last one is like, Respect others' time. So everyone has only like 24 hours in a day, and everyone spares their little amount of time, and they spend the time with you from that 24 hours. So you need to make sure you don't make the time go in, go in vain. So for example, like um, you all come here, like uh, uh, let's assume there are like 100 people in this room, and because I'm uh, bad with uh, numbers, 100 into <laughs> If my talk is 30 minutes, I'm not, I'm not just wasting, I mean, I'm not just using 30 minutes of your time. I'm using like 100 into 30 minutes, which is collectively 300 minutes of your time, everyone's time. So I need to make sure I'm delivering something. I'm, I need to make sure I'm putting in some efforts. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm just uh, bra bragging about me. Anyhow, so that's how uh, you need to empathize people and you know, you need to make sure you're not wasting others' time. 
and all these practices you need to be deliberate so it won't come right away right so it's like um, you can't uh, become naturally empathetic first you need to force it and it's like kind of fake it until you make it so it's not easy it's 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 a it's a choice you have to make every time so every time uh, when you talk with people or every time when you try to uh, understand what they talk it's a choice you make either to act as a cool jerk or empathize people so it's like using uh, vim who has used vim who is using vim right <laughs> the first time when you started using vim is like how the hell do i exit that <laughs> escape <laughs> wq <laughs> pull the plug <laughs> right so but eventually you you google that how to exit vim and you will like escape w colon no colon w q how do i didn't say anything what so so initially you need to put in deliberate efforts but once you do that in time it will get into your muscle memory you'll be like escape colon w q escape colon w q so right you don't even remember the commands that's how you need to be deliberate while pra practicing empathy Let's um, talk about empathy-driven development. So you heard about software, I mean, uh, test-driven development and behavior-driven development, but what software really needs is empathy-driven development. And we'll go to the very first uh, part of our software cycle, which is requirements. You need to understand users. You are uh, mostly people are in their mere 20s or 30s who are into development. and without even understanding the user how will you make a software for a 70 year old uh, women or man right you need to empathize your user and the users who are going to use your software will not be in the same environment as yours they won't have their caffeine lying around and they won't be high on caffeine and with all this junk food or you know uh, in a air conditioned room so they'll be in a different scenario and different situation while they use your software or your device so you have to first empathize your users like yeah don't do this mercy alert system <laughs> so next thing is the architecture design right so when you design something uh, you need to change your architecture or you need to bring in some components into your tech stack for the company you just don't go with the shiny components just because google is using kubernetes uh, your startup which has like 20 apa calls per day shouldn't use kubernetes okay so you have to make the right trade offs while you know choosing a tech stack and you have to make sure everyone in the team understands the tech stack either it's a junior or a senior or even an intern like uh, i have a friend here called joseph i don't know whether he is in the hall there is i don't know okay so joseph uh, when when i met him last time he told me something so it's called uh, i code i code test i don't know whether i'm spelling the name right i code test is something which they do for tech stack in their company so i code is actually a junior developer it's not it's not a fancy software term first i thought that it's a software term so whenever they choose their tech stack they make sure the developer i code he's he's able to you know understand the stack and he's able to use it or learn it right away so just you know the yeah, iko test when you are whenever you are designing some architecture and there is no one size fits all approach like just because something works work for someone it doesn't mean that it should work for you you need to be right here about your decisions and in development it comes to the code right so whenever you write code let your code speak right so write code for you know humans not machines and whenever your code needs a second pass to understand that just add some comments don't add what you did just tell why you did that it's like labeling the cat to a cat it's like this is a cat oh yeah this is a cat all right and if you open your code after 6 months down the line or next year you should be like it shouldn't be like what wtf no like who wrote this code get blame oh it's me <laughs> so at least try to reduce the number of wt of moments eventually so one day you know you'll write very good code and the next thing is like 
watch your toxic tone. Right? So this is something uh, toxic tone. I came across this uh, from April April Wenzel's blog. Uh, she is kind of she has a startup called Compassionate Coding, and uh, she teaches everyone to be compassionate, or the uh, people in in other companies to be compassionate towards others. So, so that was a beautiful blog post, and you know, toxic tone is something which everyone has, even without knowing. You know, learning something, some skill doesn't give you, uh, give you the capability to communicate that. So for example, if I know some tech stack and you don't know that, uh, even without knowing, I will sound like a superior jerk. You'll be like, oh, you know, everything. Look at that. So, so you should always watch your tone. So don't, you know, make sure you don't have a toxic tone when you talk to others. And don't do CYAE. Have you ever come across the CYAE? It's like, it's kind of an engineer, engineering practice people do. And I've seen that. And even sometimes I've done that, but I got over it. It's like, it's called uh, cover your uh, engineering. So if, when you constantly spend time and energy for yourself to make sure, you know, when things mess up, you'll get out of it. Don't, that, uh, don't do that. So. If you spend all your energy on yourself, you won't be able to empathize others. You won't be able to spend time or energy to empathize others. And every time you will end up throwing others into the bus and under the bus. And eventually it will lead to a very toxic environment. Okay, so I told like, I said I gave you so many pointers on what is empathy and how to be empathetic and how to practice and what are the benefits. but. If you're still not convinced, let me give you a final nudge. So empathy makes you a better programmer, right? So since you're able to empathize your fellow developers, your users, you'll start writing code for humans, not machines. So as uh, Martin Folwer said, uh, any fool can write code that computer can understand, but only good programmers write code that humans can understand. So you'll start writing code for humans, which eventually makes you a better programmer. And once you make the connection with people around you and you're able to empathize their feelings, people start admiring you. They'll, they'll feel very comfortable around you, they'll feel connected with you, and they will want to work with you. And empathy gives you strength, right? So once you start empathizing people, instead of just consuming and taking things, you start giving to others. So once you start giving, you will feel more confident, right? Confident about everything. Even if you give enough, you will beat your imposter syndrome. So even empathy gives you strength to come out of your imposter syndrome, which we all suffer. Even you agree or not, we do have that. So what will you become if uh, something makes you stronger, better, and admired? Right? Empathy makes you a superhero. So. I think you should be convinced, right? So <laughs> start following, start practicing empathy deliberately, and it becomes, I mean, it will make you a superhero one day. And personally, I don't like Superman. Not a fan of Superman. So how many of them are not a fan of Superman? Only a few? Really? OK, anyhow, high five. <laughs> so empathy makes you a uh, Batman. <laughs> Right? Remember, with practice, consistency, and discipline, anyone can become a Batman. You don't have to come from another planet and jump down to Earth to become a superhero. Right? So I'll, I'd like to end this talk with this quote. So how have the problems in software can be solved if people are empathetic to each other? The rest we can use cutting edge stick. Right? And these are the references. So you should definitely watch the first uh, talk. It's like, uh, that was the only talk I came across when I wanted to give this talk. So it's heavily in inspired from that talk. And the second one is uh, the video about the fox and the beer by Bernie Brown on YouTube. And you should definitely read all the blogs from April Wenzel. Uh, she is so good and in writing about uh, the human touch in software. And there are a few TED Talks and blog posts. And all these beautiful images were taken from Unsplash.
And I think that's it from me. Thank you. You can go find these slides at my website slash talks. So I empathize you that it's going to be end of the day and I'm leaving you early. <laughs> so. Will you take some questions? Yeah. Are there any questions? I think everybody here is, I was going to say everybody here is empathetic with everybody who wants to go home. But there's this one guy over here, which we will oblige. <laughs> Sorry, dude. No, of course, well, uh, questions are welcome. What's up? Uh, hi, I'm Austin. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you uh, are not specifically born empathetic. Uh, could you tell us maybe when or how you um, realize that empathy is important in uh, software development and coding? Uh, so it was in my uh, initial uh, stage of my career. Uh, yeah, even still I'm in initial stage. Like <laughs> I've been into five years. Uh, I've been in software into five years. But in initial stage, I was like uh, kind of acting as a cool guy. So <laughs> So whenever interns ask me some questions, I'd be like, did you Google first? First Google it. Then you come to me after that. So I used to do that. Then uh, uh, I don't know where, well, like, uh, eventually I realized, uh, you know, uh, being a cool guy is just like being a jerk. Uh, either I was, you know, uh, got inspired by wrong set of people or something. So I deliberately look forward to people who are more empathetic and who are adored or like uh, who are kind of influencing the software. So once I start, start following them and reading about their things, I realized that you know software needs more empathy and yeah. So I don't have I don't have any specific events. Yeah. Wonderful. Any other question? That was a great question, by the way. Any other question? Oh, there's another one. All right. Hello. So now, when an intern asks you uh, how to do how to do this, how to do that, what do you answer? Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Um, so uh, the previous answer which I told is like, um, it, it was kind of rude, right? Just even before listening to them, you can't uh, tell them, did you Google it first? It's like, uh, so there has been like a debate on removing this term RTF, um, if you know the meaning, read the uh, freaking manual. So it's like, uh, um, and uh, so my ap approach was like that, read the freaking manual, no. So first, I try to understand why they ask me instead of Googling, because uh, they don't have used Google uh, to solve software problems before. So even they don't know how to use the right keywords. So instead of that, right now I'm just, um, instead of you know being so rude, I just tell them, uh, uh, I mean teach them how to Google so that, you know. <laughs> right? No, that, actually it's a, Skill, right? It's a, it's one of the main skill you need in, as a software developer. It's like you can have Python, you can have Go, you can have even Java, but your Google search skill should be like this. <laughs> That's what makes you, I mean, a good developer, right? <laughs> All right, that is true. Other questions? Okay, well. Uh, last um, question. Hi. Um, why do you hate Superman? What? <laughs> um, because he's an alien. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, okay, that's a very personal attack. Say, <laughs> so, I like Batman, right? So he's super rich. <laughs> like, has like fancy gadgets. Have you seen his, you know, Batmobile, right? That he Don't you just want to inherited. Drive? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, it's simple. Anyone can become Batman, but you have to need. Uh, you need to have like superpowers to become Superman. So that's. The thing. <laughs>
Good answer, man. Other questions? Aside from the Superman Batman debate. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Wim versus Emax. Okay, there's one more. <laughs> Okay, my question. I'm Mark. Being empathetic to others, what had happened to you, to you in a team or what happened to the team when you have practiced empathy? Did they stay or did they leave you for a team, for example? Um, did they leave me? Um, <laughs> no, actually no. Like when you're able to understand people you you know they won't go away from you right so uh, you make uh, as i said like you try to make a connection with them so um, even however the code is sucky <laughs> still you understand why you try to understand why it sucks and uh, uh, because like uh, no one writes bad code like uh, people write people write code in bad situations so you will able to understand that and eventually you know it it it, it will help you to build a better relationship at your work, as well as with your clients. Like, yeah, my, I sound like I'm being so perfect, but I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm still learning. So yeah, that's, that would be the answer.